Hi there, Tim with After Later Audio. Today we're going to look at the Atom, which is a slimmed down version of the Mutable Instruments Elements. Um, Elements is basically, uh, it's a full synth voice. It is uh, modal synthesis, which is not all that common, um, and it's just a type of physical modeling synthesis. So there are two sections on Atom. There's the exciter section, and then there is the, um, the modal resonator. Uh, and on the modal resonator side, you can get really close to some rings type uh, sounds. I think Atom uh, or Elements is often overlooked uh, when comparing to uh, rings. Uh, rings is a great module, but I, I feel like I have a lot more fun and get a lot more out of Atom. Um, and the more I use it, the more I see uh, you know, just how expansive the, the just the, the palette of, of timbres you can get out of it. So why don't we dive in, do a quick overview. Um, as with all of our uh, slim down versions of the mutable stuff, we like to refer people to the original manual. Um, so we do not have manuals on this, but we do get a lot of questions and a lot of emails about them. So uh, yeah, this video is for you if that's what you've been looking for. Let's dive in. Okay, so here is Adam, um, and you can see uh, we have two different sides here. This is the uh, the excitation signal generator, and then this is the modal resonator. So actually, this side is very very similar to rings. Um, you can even see that there are some similar names for the parameters here. We've got position. Um, we've got uh, what is this here? This is the dampening. So we have that. Um, the brightness, which we still have, shape, which actually is just called geometry here, um, and then of course we have our frequency. Um, this has a fine tune knob, which this doesn't, it has an FM uh, attenuator here. Um, you can see that there are actually attenuverters for uh, every single um, parameter. And then also additionally here, what ring, rings does not have is this space, um, and that actually can get into some pretty nice reverb. Um, but we'll cover this in a moment. Let's go back to the excitation signal generator. You can see up here you have bow, blow, and strike. Um, and then these knobs here are basically the volume um, of each one of these voices. So you have a nice little mixer. Um, there is timbre uh, control for each one of these and then there are attenuverters for each one of uh, each one of the different voices timbres. Um, and then we have mallet and flow which we'll talk about in a moment. All again have attenuverters. Down here, this is very cool. This is um, an envelope generator, basically. Um, it can go from ADSR to AD to uh, AS, I believe. Okay, so let's just look at the, the bow section first. Um, I'll, I'll hold down the, uh, the play button here, and then I'll adjust the timbre. So you can hear that going up. Um, and also the parameters over here will affect what's happening on this side because this is running through here. Okay, so that's pretty neat. Um, and then there, the amp in for uh, the amp CV in here is for the bow section. So you can get some nice, uh, like with a sine wave, a nice pulsing, um, almost like uh, side chain compression type effect there. We'll look at that later. Now let's check out the, uh, the blow section. So this is more like uh, flutes or any sort of like wind instrument. And you'll notice there is a flow knob here and a flow CV in, and the flow knob has uh, an attenuverter. So that is basically um, controlling the flow of how the air would flow through the instrument. And 
And then finally we have the strike, which is maybe my favorite part of this side of the module. Um, because you can get into some really cool percussive type stuff from bass drums to hi-hats. So what I really, really like about Atom is you can send a gate in here to trigger it. Um, and because of just the way it sounds and being able to turn these, these things up and down with CV, you can actually create um, like a drum beat and uh, like a, a, a melodic line at the same time. Um, so yeah, I often use this to add a little bit more of like a hi-hat type thing on top of any sort of like dedicated hi-hat voice. But let's check out the strike. One thing to keep in mind, the, the envelope generator does not affect the strike. Um, and it has, this may have the most variation in sound as far as um, all the different voices on the exciter side goes, because it also has this mallet control. So that's, this is the timbre. So this is like what kind of material is being struck. And this is the mallet, which is what kind of material is doing the striking. Let's turn this dampening down here really quick. And there's some really cool um, combinations of mallet and timbre where you can get some like double hits. So let's just go in the noon position here and go through the mallets. So you can hear that. So it's like a bouncing ball almost. Oops, wrong. enough get the right settings you can get a pretty cool kick drum um, yeah so once again you have uh, attenuverters controlling the timbre of all uh, three of the voices on the exciter side um, and then each one has their own kind of dedicated um, parameter like the flow and the mallet and then the amp which does not have a uh, an attenuverter, but you don't really need one there. Um, so let's just take a listen with the envelope generator in the middle uh, section with all of these um, voices at the same time with their timbres in the middle position. but we are not done with the exciter side. Um, as you can see, there's an exciter in, and then there's a resonator in. So much like, much like rings, you can process external signals through the resonator. Well, you can actually process um, signals through the exciter and through the resonator. So why don't we take a listen to some, uh, some signals going through? All right, so I'm just gonna put a voice from the Beehive, which is a smaller version of Platts, um, into the exciter. But let's just first, really quick, listen to the exciter without it. And now let's put in Beehive. And then we'll take this one step further uh, with, we'll, we'll send some gates to it because I think, um, you know, that's where it really, really shines the brightest is having it uh, being triggered by some sort of uh, gate or trigger sig uh, signal. Um, and then I think what else I like to do, I'm just going to trigger an envelope over here on Baker. Um, and then I'm going to use the, the level here, like a VCA. Okay. So what I have patched up here is once again, I've got the beehive into the exciter in on the atom. Um, I'm triggering the atom with uh, the Morcom expander. So that's being generated off the Benjamin V2. Um, and then I'm using the Enigma expander. So that's like a, uh, a five step uh, voltage sequencer, running that through ornament and crime for quantization, and then running both of uh, just molting that out and controlling the uh, one volt per octave of each. Um, so right now I just have the beehive going through here. Um, so that's what you're hearing right now. So let's start turning up some of our parameters here. 
once you start adding in um, external modulation into all of this stuff it gets very very fun so first let's take a look at the uh, the amp control of the um, the bow section I just got a triangle wave coming out of the Benjolin um, so listen to the difference here side. Add that beehive back in. Cool. Now I'm going to add that uh, that same, tr um, actually I'm going to put a pulse wave from the Benjolin um, into the flow. So now I've just got the, the uh, blow side up here, so listen to the difference here. Like I mentioned earlier, the strike side is probably my favorite of the uh, the exciter section. So I'm going to uh, get these things triggered over here. <laughs> these things. So yeah, I've got two channels of carve. So basically, just uh, nice AD envelopes, um, and I'm going to control the timbre and the mallet um, of the strike here. Let's just do one at a time. And now mallet. Okay, before we get into this side uh, explanation wise, let's just take a listen to uh, what happens when we start adjusting the parameters on the resonant side when we've got a patch going on the, um, the uh, exciter side. back into the exciter in. So just a really quick summation of this side before you move on. Um, we've got our three different uh, voices here uh, in the, ex the, the excitation generator, and we have all our control over it. Um, and then I'm not sure if I mentioned earlier, but the external signal here actually goes through the blowing generator. So the flow, the envelope, timbre, um, and then the volume of this will um, be affected or what, what you plug into the, to this will be affected by that. Um, so alternatively, uh, with the resonator in, you're not passing through any of this section, you're just passing directly in the resonators. 
So alternatively, we have the resonator in, um, and that just bypasses all of this on this side and passes a signal through here. So as you saw a second ago, you can process two different or the same signal through the two different sides. Um, but yeah, let's dive in. Um, obviously, course, that's just the tune, the tuning function here. Then we have our FM modulation uh, attenuverter here. So we have uh, the inputs here. This is the uh, the attenuverter for that incoming signal. So the geometry is an essential parameter. Um, it controls the geometry and stiffness of the resonating structure. So it goes from plates to strings to tubes, bells, and whatnot. Um, the brightness parameter controls how uh, muted the high frequency modes are. Um, so low values, obviously. Um, you know, it, it basically filters off those high, those high um, frequencies. So you can think of it almost as like a filter for your um, your resonating side, and even the um, the exciter side that that passes through it. Here we have our damping. This is kind of uh, you know it's similar to an envelope. It basically um, controls how quickly and en the energy dissipates through the material. So modulating this parameter uh, can recreate the effect of damping or muting the sound by blocking the vibrating surface with the hand. So with this, I actually, um, if you check out our Instagram, I. I did a pretty cool little patch where um, I modulated this uh, just so uh, that it actually sounds like a palm muted guitar. Um, that was pretty sweet. Position um, controls which point of the string surface the, excit the excitation is applied. Applying the excitation right in the middle of the surface will cause, uh, by symmetry, the even harmonics to cancel each other out, resulting in a hollow sound reminiscent of a square wave. Um, this setting will remind you of the PWM pulse width control um, on uh, like a square wave oscillator. So that is a pretty fun parameter. What else do we have here? Space. This one is really, really cool. Um, it controls the stereo width and amount of algorithmic reverberation applied to the sound. So um, you can get into some very, very wide stereo, big, big uh, room sounding uh, reverbs. And I think I've heard a lot of people uh, get confused. I think they th that I've heard people think that uh, Adam or Elements is basically just a uh, rings and a clouds put together, but that that's not true. However, the uh, the reverb on this um, can get pretty close to what the reverb on cloud sounds like if you uh, have the the wet dry down and are just using the reverb. That same kind of enormous spacious uh, setting. Um, and then of course we have all of our CV inputs and our resonator input and attenuverters for all of the CV ends. I mean, there's 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 so much to this module um, that we to do a full full in depth uh, demo would be um, it would be very time consuming. And I also think you'd just be better off uh, if you want to go deeper than this video just went uh, to head over to the Mutable Instruments. Uh, website and check out the element manual. I will put a link to that in the show description. Um, but why don't I build a cool little patch just to fully uh, utilize everything um, on here. Uh, hopefully I can do that in a meaningful way and then I can walk you through that. I figured I would explain the patch as I build it um, to just tell you uh, what I'm using for what parameters and why I'm making these decisions. Um, as you can see, I switched out some modules. I brought the Pachinko in just because it is such a great gate and uh, random CV uh, sequencer. And if you're curious about this, I recently published uh, a pretty lengthy overview about that. Um, but right now, all I have going on here is um, the strike side on the uh, the exciter, or the the strike voice on the exciter side. Um, I've got a, uh, a quantized voltage going into one volt per octave, so that's giving us our melody. Um, I've got the the clock out of the pachinko uh, hitting the gate of the atom, um, and then I'm also uh, I've got that molted, and I'm clocking the benjolin. Um, and I'm using some morcom morcom gate outs to trigger the um, channels one and two of carve to get some nice ad envelopes for uh, modulation and i'm modulating the mallet and the timbre of the strike side so that's giving it kind of that percussive element so like i mentioned earlier you can get into percussive and melodic stuff just out of this one synthesizer and that's just one section of it there's much more to go so let's uh let's keep building 
Okay, so we have our strike side, which we just went over. Um, and now I've got the flow side, or uh, the blow side, excuse me. Um, and once again, I am using the carve to modulate the timbre and the, uh, the flow of the blow. And um, I think this is also a little percussive, which is pretty cool. And then combined with the strike, pretty cool percussive territory. Um, I just want to take a moment really quick because this is the first video I've used these in, but we did just get these brand new black stackable cables in the shop. Um, so they're a much sleeker design than our last one. So you can see the difference in the size there. Um, and really cool, um, there's these one-sided because uh, I don't need to double my input on the trigger to trigger this, this uh, channel three on carve, but I probably do want to use this channel one of Pachinko uh, further on down the line, so that's pretty useful. Um, but yeah, I think these sound pretty cool. Um, so just modulating the, the flow and the timbre of the uh, blow section and the mallet and the timbre of the strike section. So now I'm gonna start bringing in uh, the bow section to see, um, see what I can add to this. So the bow side is one of the more subtle sides, as you can hear. So this is with the volume and the timbre all the way up. Um, however, I do feel like it gets very, very interesting when you start modulating it. Um, so let's just first put, well, I've got this molted out of channel two, this kind of quick uh, opening and closing envelope from Carve. I'm gonna put that into the amp. And it's not doing much because the timbre's all the way down, and when the timbre's all the way down, the sound's almost not there. So actually, let's just turn that up really quick. So it's adding some of that. So it's adding some of that um, kind of melodic side into it when that amp comes up, but it's still remaining. Um, it's still also contributing to that percussive uh, element because it's still in time with it. So let's add um, this triangle output from the oscillator uh, one on Benjamin V2. Let's turn this timbre all the way down and uh, we'll add that to the timbre in. So I think that's a really great effect and I think it sounds really, really cool with uh, all three sides. Messing with the envelope shape here um, really drastically changes uh, the behavior as well. I like to keep it around here because um, if you want to open things up more, the damp is really good for that. Um, and it's just nice and easy to control the, um, the, the space with space and uh, the damping. Um, so I think this just slightly turned up from all the way down uh, on the envelope generator is my sweet spot. All right, let's, uh, let's keep working on it. Okay, so I did some uh, tuning because I wanted to uh, put the beehive into the exciter. Um, so it sounds a little different than it just did before. Um, so what I've got going now is I'm running, well, not yet, but I'm going to run the beehive into the exciter in here. Um, and I am sequencing the one volt per octave on the atom and the beehive with the same sequence. Um, and then I am um, modulating the timbre on the beehive and then I'm basically controlling the level which is like a built-in VCA with um, channel 3 from carve so that'll be injected into Adam uh, every time that opens up but let's just take a really quick listen to just what's happening with beehive So that's the dry signal. Um, so let's just run that now into Adam. So 
So as we know, it goes through the blow side, so you can kind of hear it being injected in there. It's pretty subtle, but I think it makes a pretty uh, effective change to the patch. Um, and sometimes what I like to do is just, um, because Beehive has two outputs, just run that into the mixer and then just kind of have it buried a little bit. So it's, it's reinforcing the, um, what's going through the atom. All right, let's keep building because we've got a whole other side to use. Okay, so we're getting real weird. Um, I've got another quantized voltage coming from N rings, um, but I'm not gonna run N rings into the mixer. I'm actually gonna run it into the resonator in. Um, so that's what you usually do to rings is run things into its resonator, but I'm actually gonna run it into um, Adam's resonator. I've got it being strummed by the, the third output on Pachinko, and I've also uh, got one of the one of the gates from Morcom going into it as well. Um, and then let's plug our uh, let's put our Beehive back into the exciter. Let's run the second output from um, Beehive into the resonator in on rings. And I think the final piece to this puzzle is to modulate uh, the resonator side. So be back in a flash. Finally, um, I'm modulating the, the damp here with um, the, the Y output from Pachinko. Um, I know this is a real mess. Um, also, I'm, I'm using the X3 uh, CV out on um, Pachinko to do the, uh, the position here. Um, I'm also using one of the um, quantized sequences out to, uh, to sequence the geometry so that, I remember I mentioned that you can kind of build like almost like chords with the geometry and the chorus tune. If you dial in two different sequences on that, you can actually get kind of some cool sounding like uh, moving chord progressions. Um, and then I've got a channel four uh, AD from AD envelope from Carve, just going into the damp on uh, end rings here um, and let's see I think I also oh yeah and I'm, I'm using the uh, triangle out of oscillator 2 into uh, on Benjolin into the um, the uh, where is that going to the brightness here so yeah I uh, other than the space in the FM mod I believe I am modulating everything that you can on um, on uh, Adam here, so actually let's just uh, let's just get something that's not in time with anything, um, and I'm gonna modulate the uh, the uh, the space with a really fast, random, uh, smooth. All right, that's Adam. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, I appreciate your time. Uh, if you want to learn more, like I said, you should visit the manual at the Mutable Instruments website um, because there is more to this thing, um, especially like the explanation of how it all works. Um, that would have just taken like 15 minutes of the, uh, the video. So I decided against that, but uh, yeah, please visit uh, 
mutableinstruments.com to check out more information on it. And if you want to learn more about specifically Adam, you can go to afterlateraudio.com. That's where we have these cool patch cables and every other module that you see here in uh, the rack. Thanks for watching.